We've got Durham in the in the Royal London quarter final. Are you starting now to, to believe that this could be the year in terms of maybe winning two trophies? Well, obviously we've got a chance of winning two trophies. I think you know we've got to be careful not to get too carried away. Um, you know, we generally we played some very good cricket this year. Um, you know, missed an opportunity to qualify for T20 quarterfinals when you know when we had opportunity. Um, so we missed our chance there, but. Uh, importantly, we played a lot better this year in T20 than we did last year, so there's an improvement there. Um, obviously, we played very well in the Championship throughout the summer. Find ourselves top of the table with three games left, and obviously quarter-final, as you say, on Thursday in the 50-over competition. So, um, you know, everything to play for going into the final few weeks. But um, you know, we've we've not won anything yet, so we need to keep our you know our feet on the ground and just keep keep playing the way we have and keep preparing properly and um, you know it's an old cliche but just taking each game as it comes really. So what's impressed you about our performances in the in the group stages of the Royal London? Well we started well I mean we we our first game if you remember was at Old Trafford the day after we we kind of lost to, to Notts here in the in the final T20 qualifying game so we were knocked out of that competition so to go to Old Trafford the next day and put in a um, you know, really good all-round performance. I think showed the character of the players, and I think that that's really what what's come through throughout the season is is the character of the players, the desire of the players, and the skill of the players. And um, you know, we've worked out pretty quickly how how best to play 50-over cricket and, and and our own way of playing 50-over cricket, and we put that into um, you know into practice very well at Old Trafford, having had very little time to prepare. Um, you know, and the, and the lads spoke about how how they wanted to play this form of the game, and, and we went out and carried it out perfectly. Uh, had a little blip the next game against Gloucester, but you know, apart from that, we've been very consistent in our plans and very consistent in our execution of those plans. Hence, why we're now in the quarter final. Can you give us an insight into into what those plans are? Yeah, well, I think you know, 50 overs is a long time to bat, and I think you know that was been the big thing that we talked about at the start was you know that. Sure, you have to use the power play. You know, the first ten overs as best you can, but there's no no need to be really reckless. And I think you know, by and large, um, Alex Lees and Adam Lyre, they've got that balance of being attacking and positive, but but not being reckless, and they've and they've done it really well. Um, so, you know, I think generally the batsmen have got have got really good game plans. You know, there's. There's lots of areas that you can hit, you know, with the field restrictions as they are now in this form of the game. There's, you know, there's lots of gaps out there, and um, you know, we've 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 used those really well. Um, on the other hand, you know, with the bowling, it, you know, your margins for error are very small. Again, with the field restrictions that bowlers are allowed, you know, your lines and lengths have got to be really spot on, and um, you know, the bowlers have worked really hard in. Uh, making sure that they do get the lines and lengths right, and they're very clear in which type of delivery they're, they're looking to ball, whether that be you know hard length bouncer, slow ball bouncer, slow ball, whatever, um, and being very clear of what fields they want for for each type of delivery. So there's a there's a clarity really in what we're trying to do, and um, you know it's worked well for us so far. And looking at the spin option, I think you know um, Adil Rashid's been in fantastic form yet again at Hampshire. He showed what he was what he's capable of. Yeah, Adil's bowled you know really well all season and you know he's in particular over the last few weeks he's he's been outstanding you know he's obviously full of confidence at the moment and um, you know his he's Google is he's working well he's getting him a lot of wickets at the minute so um, you know hopefully he can maintain that throughout the rest of the season and uh, you know he's going to be a big part if we're going to be successful this year then you know he's going to be a big part of that. What can we expect from Durham it's local rivals yet again here at Headingley? Yeah, I mean Durham are a good team. You know, I think they're one-day cricket. They, you know, they've they've had some outstanding performances, and um, you know, it's um, it's a case of who plays best on the day, really. But they've got some match winners within their team. Um, you know, so we're not clearly not going to take them lightly. But um, by and large, it's about us playing to to our best. And you know, I feel that if we do, then you know, we're more than capable of beating them. But um, you know, they clearly are a team that that can be dangerous. Does it see us having a, a home tie in this in this in this round? Yeah, definitely. I think it's always good to be at home. Um, I mean, obviously, there could have been you know a couple of well, could have been Kent away, uh, which you know, given that we've got a big game coming up on Sunday at Old Trafford, you know that avoiding that that travelling um, you know is important. So I think you know it is key that we we get a home tie. Um, 
you know, from a financial point of view as well, you know, as well as a cricket point of view. And just quickly on the championship, how do you keep the, the lads' firm, feet firmly on the ground? You know, three big games coming up, a big rivalry against Langston, we've got Notts, which could be the title decider. How, how do you do that? Well, as I say, it's the old cliche, one game at a time and keep drumming that in, you know, that... Um, and the lads are good, you know, they've been, they understand, you know, they don't need telling you know, what's at stake over the next few weeks. Um, but, um, you know, within the group, everybody's just keep, you know, the captain spoke really well after the game at Scarborough when we beat Sussex about, you know, just taking one step at a time. You know, one, one ball, one hour, one session, one day, you know, taking it in small segments and not looking too far ahead of ourselves. And, you know, so far the lads have been really good at that. I know you've mentioned the fact that uh, we might have balance and, and root and possibly plunk it back. Is there any, any movement on that on those three players? Yeah, I mean I'm I'm hopeful um, you know that Liam will be fit. He's you know he's starting training again now, so uh, he's got a couple of weeks to be ready for that Trent Bridge game, so hopefully he will be. Um, you know, and the indications from England are, are positive so far. We've not got final confirmation about Gary and uh, and Joe. Um, but uh, you know the lads are keen to play, so hopefully that will um, you know that will happen. Obviously, it'd be uh, it'd be tough for whoever misses out because obviously everybody's contributed really well to this to this season. So um, you know there will be some uh, you know disappointed player or two possibly, but um, you know we haven't got final confirmation from England yet.